So do you remember at the start of the year when Renault teased the Philant and it looked a little bit like a Batmobile? Yeah. Ah, right. Anywho, we've been invited to Morocco to go and watch Renault break a record in terms of efficiency at motorway speeds. Now, while this thing might look like it should be chasing the Joker, instead, it's chasing something much harder. Physics. You're watching Electrify. Subscribe. So after the initial disappointment, I realised something. Renault aren't trying to be the fastest. They're not trying to be the coolest. They're not even trying to be dramatic. They're trying to be the stingiest. Now this car exists for one reason only, efficiency. So everything that didn't serve that goal didn't make it into the final design. So this is the Philant. It's less a car and more of a rolling science experiment. No pedals, no car play, no creature comforts. It's basically a carbon fiber slipper with a battery and a mission. And yes, it's exactly as comfortable as it looks. Okay, so there are no pedals for the driver. You've only got what looks like a computer console and you've got a screen here in front of you. So this is like my point of view. So you've got a screen here and then you've got all of your uh, efficiency going on, how fast you're going. Then you can set your cruise control and all that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's just, it's a very carbon fibery <laughs> box and I can't see the bonnet. I can't see it, but I do know that in terms of making it so thin, so it, this is thinner than a Clio, they have put the battery and kind of stacked the battery on top of each other so that then they've made it thin enough to make it aerodynamic enough so that then it can go much faster or much further, if you will. Very nice. Can someone let me out now, please? Renault is here to attempt something very specific. Drive more than a thousand kilometers in under 10 hours at real motorway speeds on one single charge. So to achieve that, Renault has brought us here to Morocco. We are right in the middle of nowhere. This is the UTAC proving ground here in Morocco. So there's actually quite a few dotted around the world. There's one in Bedfordshire actually called the Millbrook proving ground. And this one is huge. So you've got 15 different types of tracks. There's 30 kilometers of track here. It's massive. So the car is basically gonna drive around a five kilometer circuit, round and round in circles, again and again and again and again for nearly 10 hours. Yeah, it's an endurance record, but with roughly the excitement of watching a washing machine, right up until the battery starts getting low. The driver has just climbed in. We'll be swapping drivers, by the way, but otherwise he might need a wee. I did spot him having one earlier. So the whole point is to cheat the air. So the slimmer and the smoother you make something, the less energy it will need at speed. So Renault has reworked the shape after wind tunnel testing because apparently air is rude and refuses to cooperate. I don't know if you can spot the wheels, but the wheels are so, so thin. So they've been working on this design for a really, really long time to make it as aerodynamic as physically possible. They've gone back, made tweaks, gone back, made tweaks. Because the idea is they're gonna be getting around 7.2 miles per kilowatt hour, which is, Something I've never seen before. Though for context, plenty of normal electric cars will use double that on the motorway. This attempt lives or dies on one thing, before the car even turns a wheel. And Renault has already learned that the hard way. Early morning, empty track. It's also perfect weather conditions. So basically they tried to do this back in October, but they couldn't do it because then it was like raining or it was too cold and all that kind of thing. But they wanted like the perfect temperature. I can tell you it's quite chilly this morning, but it'll be all right once the sun's up, then the efficiency might be better on the car. that the drivers have to weigh less than 50 kilograms because otherwise it's going to affect the efficiency. So now I understand why they chose to do this before Christmas. That makes sense. I'm going to go find out something. Right, this is Arthur. He's a chassis engineer for Renault and Alpine and also one of the drivers for today. Yeah, exactly. Which to me makes no sense because I was told 
that you have to be under 50 kilograms to be able to be a driver for this? I'm under 50 kilograms. Are you? No. <laughs> no, no, but I don't think one of our... Nobody of uh, the three pilots are under 50 kilograms. I was going to say, because yeah. then you have to be teeny tiny. I'm, I'm not, I'm lightweight for I'm my... I'm not asking how for much you weigh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for sure, uh, the less we, we weigh, the better it is for the efficiency. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah. 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 But uh, no, we are not at the, at the kilogram... Uh, okay, that's fine, yeah, yeah. that's fine. Um, also, when you're in the car, it's very chilly this morning. Yeah. Is there heating in the car? Absolutely not. Is there heated seats? No. No, heated no. steering? No. No. Is there music that you can listen to? No. Right. So it's going to be a fun day for you. So once the car is running, everything becomes about numbers, distance, time, battery. Every lap either confirms the plan or quietly threatens it. Some people come to Morocco for sunshine. We came for spreadsheets. So here's all the data that they've got from the car. This is all live data of what's going on right now. So at the moment, we're at 56 kilometers. That's how far he's traveled. And you can see uh, how much of the battery's left. At the moment, you've got 95%. So as it stands, they're pretty much bang on target to get it right. I did ask what would happen if they reach 1,000 and they keep going. And I think they're just going to keep going and hope for the best. But they're not going to put it in like eco mode or anything like that. They're just going to fully test it in normal mode as it's driving right now. But you can see, the consumption numbers are amazing. So it's doing 8.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So that works out roughly around, I've done the maths, uh, about 7.14 miles per kilowatt hour, which is probably the most efficient thing I have ever seen. And I've been driving electric cars for a while. This thing is full of nerdy magic, high nerds. So it's steer by wire, brake by wire, ultralight materials, special Michelin low rolling resistant tires. Translation, every gram, every ripple of air, every tiny bit of drag, they've tried to bully it into submission. Now you've got to bear in mind that this is running on the same battery as a Renault Scenic, an 87 kilowatt hour battery. Now, the range of the Scenic is 381 miles or about 613 kilometers. It's really fascinating to see how weight and aerodynamics makes a massive difference to range. I mean, this thing weighs less than a thousand kilograms. It's actually 300 kilograms lighter than a Renault 5. It's fascinating stuff. You can go now. Good stuff. Every superhero needs its origin story, right? And for Renault, that's the Falant. That was the name that they gave to their most extreme cars. So they're nodding back to 1925, a hundred years ago, when they released the 40CV, the record-breaking car. That had a nine liter engine, <laughs> absolutely crazy. The design has been taken from the Falant Etoile from 1956. So you can see the nods on this modern car. And then the rest of the design of the car, I mean, the, the cockpit is like a fighter jet, so they've taken inspiration from that. The single seater, they've taken inspiration from Formula One. It's actually kind of a shame because Renault aren't part of Formula One anymore. They left this year. And once you understand the history, Falant suddenly makes a lot more sense. This is Renault doing a modern version of something that they've been doing for a hundred years. Which brings us neatly to the question of who actually decided that driving a thousand kilometers on one charge was a good idea. Well, that was my idea. Nice. Surprisingly, in design, we made a few sketches with our teams yeah. and we went to our leadership team saying, okay, we have an idea. How about completely bonkers the idea? How about we do a thousand kilometers in EV? without recharging the car and make it look like something coming from 1925 yeah. inspired from uh, the 40 CV. Amazing. So that's how the idea was born. And made it blue, of course, because 40 CV, when it was blue, it was really nice. Right, so. I mean, it's perfect, <laughs> isn't it? And we're here today, it's December, so you've just got it in time for 2025 <laughs> to nod to the 100 years. Uh, yes. But back in February, yeah. we saw the original design yeah. and I'll be honest, it looked like a Batmobile, so I bought a Batman costume with me and now I've been feeling a bit silly. Because you've taken loads of bits off, so what happened there? Yeah, um, now uh, it's a prototype, right? Yeah. It's not just a pure concept car. Uh, so the idea of this car is to actually perform, actually work, right? Actually do 1,000 kilometers. And to do this, we have uh, three main parameters. One 
and the most important is the aerodynamic drag, right? Yeah. So the car has to be most efficient possible. Think of it as, a, as an equivalent of a fish swimming in the water, right? So the fastest fishes are the, are the, are the most hydrodynamic ones, yes. right? Air is the same. When you go faster, air starts acting like water and starts to slow you down. Yeah. So if you had to sculpt the car to make it as lean and slim and as, as efficient as possible with the least air resistance. Uh, tire resistance, second big topic yeah. that we worked on with Michelin, and the weight of the car, right? Yeah. So we are about 1,000 kilos. It's so light. Yeah, and yeah. the battery is around 500 kilos, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a, we don't have so much to make the car. So this m made us remove a lot of things from the car that you saw yeah. at uh, Retromobile which was a little bit more of a designer dream. And in that car, what was really good uh, was, of course, the design and the, and the impact that it gave. So it made one step. Yeah. It, talk, it gave us the communication that, that we needed around the project, that people got interested in it. Yeah. Then we made step two, which was the same car, but with better aerodynamics. And then we went to a wind tunnel to test it. Yeah, that's uh, what I was wondering if it was mainly yeah, wind tunnel stuff you were Exactly. Doing, yeah. So we tested it and uh, we were 25% uh, above the target. Oh. Yeah, uh, so by doing this, we want to improve the cars that we make on the road. So with that idea, uh, behind such a cool looking car, everybody rallied behind this idea. Yeah. So it's, it's actually a learning laboratory for us. It doesn't look like it, it looks yeah. like we're having fun. We are, <laughs> and paid for it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we are actually learning something about making our real world cars more efficient. This is the last thing and I that's why to we were able on. to do it. Yeah, I mean, for, for, for us here at Electrifying, you know, we, we've driven the Renault Scenic. We're mm. big fans of the Scenic. We know about the battery. We know mm. about all other Renault cars. Big mm. fans of the Renault 5. We are. Um, <laughs> but I'm wondering how this test will then affect future designs for mm -hmm. Renault and how you approach designing future cars. So everything we are learning. So this is a learning tool that we've created for our teams. And this way, our team gets more competent and then they get deployed in other projects and this learning will be applied everywhere. Amazing. So that's the real reason of this project, right? Yeah. And thank you very much for talking to me. One thing I have <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed during this interview is every time the car's gone past, yeah. you've watched it go. It's like you're watching your baby pass by every time and you're just so proud of what you've achieved. <laughs> right, full honesty here. Most of this record attempt is waiting. So the car goes past, you pretend you're not nervous, you stare at data, you get excited about a 1% change like you've just won the lottery, and all of this is happening on about two hours sleep. But that's the point. This isn't a one-lap hero run. It's nearly 10 hours of doing the same thing perfectly with no drama, because the smallest drama costs you range. You got it? If you're wondering what we did for 10 hours, um, mostly this. Right, there are 995 kilometres, five kilometres to go, which means one more lap, and they reckon they're going to do it in under 10 hours. At this point, everybody suddenly remembers how to feel emotions again, because 995 kilometres means that you are one bad lap away from the most heartbreaking nearly in EV history. Arthur, on box ce tour, on box ce tour. Sorry? Where I thought it was one more lap, they actually then did a bonus lap. So they're actually finishing on 1,008 kilometres. They've been driving an average of 102 kilometres per hour, and they're arriving with 11% left in the battery that could get them an extra 120 kilometres. But it's starting to get dark, and the car doesn't have headlights, so we need to stop now. Considering they still had 11% battery left, maybe they could have kept the original design or added a heater or maybe even a headlamp. This was never about building a car like this for the road. It was about proving what's possible and using what's learned here to make everyday electric cars go further, more efficiently at the speeds people actually drive. That's the point of this project. Not that you'll be driving a Falant to Tesco, but that less drag, less weight equals more range. A reminder that sometimes progress comes from doing one thing extremely well. There we go. Smashed it. These numbers technically lies because they've exceeded this. 1,008 kilometers with still 120 left over, which is unbelievable, 11% less. And they went faster than what they expected as well. Absolutely brilliant. I'm still waiting on a glass of champagne. So, just, it's good. <laughs>